Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grace, this is the Intuitive Lens. I'm here to talk about the astrology for the week. We're also gonna do a little tarot reading. This is a collective reading, it's not a personal reading. And I also wanna talk about something that I did last night. I went to a meeting called Spiritualists for Anti-Fascists. Anti-Fascist Spiritualists. Anyway, it was really cool because I was introduced to the concept of revolutionary astrology. And if you've been with my channel for any length of time, I think you'll quickly pick up on that the way I'm reading astrology and learning astrology and applying it uh, to this channel, it's really hard for me to separate myself from, you know, well, my mind, obviously, I can't, you know, I can't do that, but that, but that the way that my mind works largely is by seeing systems. Um, and any astrologer with any merit will be able to draw associations between what is the astrology is telling us energetically and what's happening in the world. Context is everything. I mean, it's how we learn. I've said this before, we are living astrology. Still, there's a part of me that's like incredibly fascinated with how did our ancestors come up with this knowledge? How did they come to this knowledge, not come up with? But, you know, why does Venus represent love and beauty and attraction? And why is Mars the planet of... Um, action and order and desire and why does Saturn represent limitations in time you know there's a lot going on here and um, the more that I look into it the more it is incredibly fascinating and and inspiring so yeah revolutionary astrology we were asking ourselves this question how do astrologers respond to the genocide in Gaza genocides in the world. The turn of the millennia, we've entered the Aquarian age where we are going to be innovating in, in so many ways across the board. Taurus has been highlighted, so we're looking at financial structures. We're also looking at our um, upheld values and how they dictate our lives or how, that, how our values and our beliefs allow us to move through life. And there's a lot of overarching themes that I think will continue to come up and that I will keep talking about. Because as we live through time, as we experience time, the only way it is possible to be a human is to experience movement through time. We come to learn more and more about uh, some of those larger outer planets moving um, and interacting with um, the other energies that are maybe more uh, nuanced day-to-day uh, -day or week-by-week, month-by-month. So this week I want to talk mostly about Saturn because Saturn has been retrograde in Pisces since June and it just went direct, well... Today, the time of my recording is November 4th, but by the time you see this, I don't know when. That's okay. There's a shadow period that follows, and it's true that a lot of the more uh, volatile effects can be felt on the day of stations or on the day of retrogrades, but really to each person their own truth, right? Their own experience. So since June, we may have been feeling stuck because Saturn is the planet of limitations, boundaries, time, lessons. Saturn rules both Capricorn and Aquarius. Which is interesting to think about because Pluto is making its way from Capricorn to Aquarius. So we can't ignore the, this link to Saturn of like we're learning collective lessons right now. Uh, a meme that I really liked was like seeing, you know, 
if you're supporting what's happening in Palestine right now, in any way, if you're compliant to it, you're failing an open book history test. Because it's true. The powers that be have been running in a way that they just know how to do. This has been handed down. Oh, I'm getting a call. One second. Spam. It's spam. It's people just wanting to sell their services. But I thought it was important because it was California. Whenever it's New York or California, I'm like, it could be work-related. I mean, it could be any state or <laughs> country, and it could be work-related. But yeah, so I was saying, the powers that be think that they can continue with business as usual and that a lot of us will, will not bat an eye or that we will be compliant or that that their actions will not suffer consequences. But just look at the way that technology has made us able to bear witness. We all have to do our part in being media literate so that we can siphon through everything that is out there whilst at the same time taking care of our bodies and our nervous systems while we witness. There's a lot of division and dichotomy happening around um, those who are vocal on social media versus not. And my favorite arguments for that issue so far have been that personal activism does not have to reflect what is on social media and that it doesn't necessarily reflect what is online. But then again, visibility is something that is important. Representation is important. Showing people where you stand is important because maybe people trust you. Maybe people respect you. Maybe they want to know what you have to say. Going back to Saturn and Pisces, right. So it may have felt as though there have been limitations and that we haven't gotten as far as we needed to or wanted to this year. Saturn retrograde in Pisces reminds us that we're doing the inner work to cultivate our dreams. Saturn has been showing us all the ways that Either we've been in our own way or we've been in situations that have been blocking the path. And it's been about, you know, this year, last year, the year before, really since 2020, since since the United States Pluto return and, um, and the COVID pandemic, mass exodus of situations, people, relationships, ending so that things can become clearer. Um, and this week... We're reminded that we are wiser because now we know what must be done. Address the things in your way that you can control or change yourself. Your beliefs, your desires, your willingness and determination to claim what is yours. Yes. Um, this week, Venus and Mercury have made your transits. Let's talk about Venus. Venus is the planet of attraction and love and beauty. And it's entering Libra this week, which is in its home space. It's, um, it's at home in Libra. This is about harmony and grace and charm and sociability. And this week, we're suspending our disbelief for a moment because things aren't super clear right now. We're still resting in the unknown, as I talked about last week. There's something formless rising to the surface. Call it inspiration. Call it a feeling. Call it an instinct. Whatever it is, if you can somehow articulate it, share it, um, there may be... Um, There may be bonds, new bonds formed over this. Um, Venus is trying with Pluto. Pluto brings power into relationships, but it can also reveal power dynamics in partnerships, 
Both people need to be willing to go just as deep. This combination can give us additional charm and sociability or a refined taste that others can appreciate. Venus is attraction and symbolizes a kind of flow. In pursuit of our deeper values, we find a way to make order of life around us. This is the process of creating art. So we see um, this week, how do you see things as beautiful or as art? You know, beauty is seeing the duality of truth, a larger truth, capital T truth. Um, this is not a week to be detail-oriented necessary. This is trying to get us to see beyond tit for tat and how where, where does personal responsibility come in and personal values and influences. Uh, Mercury sextile Pluto. An energetic exchange of ideas among broad subjects, a time to draw con connections to seemingly unrelated topics. Pluto gives power and motivation to learn and absorb information. Uh, Mercury try Neptune. Aspect brings fantasy and a taste for art. It may be difficult to deal with practical aspects of life. Sure. And finally, Mercury square Saturn. Larger truths or the revelation of information comes gives way to more clarity. The mind has time to catch up in processing the intuitive and sensing week that just passed. This is a challenging energy, so it's forcing us to see beyond previous limiting ideas. If you caught the live that I did spontaneously this week, I talked a lot about like one of the remaining takeaway lessons was about the Eight of Swords. Eight of Swords is about freedom, seeking freedom. I just got the Eight of Wands. You know, this is my personal card. If it comes out first, just like this, means we're connecting to a message. my god the chariot but i'm not taking this let's let's be a little bit more orderly all right we're gonna do a reading for the collective let's just see where we want to go if you want to check out more of the details that i wrote up about this week's energy you can always go to my website my blog theintuitivelens.com slash blog where i'm putting more of my organized thoughts because I found that after these readings, my subconscious is still working on processing the information that I've prepared for this reading. And I have more ideas and more thoughts. So I actually go back to my blog and I use it as a placeholder, as a, not even a placeholder, a, um, a home for any thoughts relating to the subjects of this week. And I'll go back even, you know, a week later and refine what's here and add to it and, and the information grows in depth. Again, the reason I started this channel was for my own learning, so it helps me and I, and I hope that it helps you. If you have any suggestions or recommendations on what you'd like to see on this channel, please leave a comment below because I'd love to, uh, for this to be able to help you as well and, and that. So let's pull a collective reading, just see what wants to come out for anyone who's watching. Ace of Swords underneath. There's the chariot that wanted to come out, or did come out before. Ace of Swords and the chariot. Look, there's something that's stuck. We talked about stuckness. Then we have the Page of Pentacles and the Lovers. That's Gemini energy. So far we have Gemini and Cancer energy. If you feel stuck, there's a you have to make a decision here. Are you willing to figure out how this works? The Page of Pentacles is the student. This is a young energy. This is saying like, look, I don't have all the answers. In fact, all I have are questions. Can you get curious about what's here? The Pentacles is the physical realm. Do you question the powers that be? Are you attempting to understand and organize? This, this is what happens before we take action. We learn as much as we can. And it's an important step because it's at least getting us out of this, this energy of being stuck or feeling like we don't have all the answers. We don't, um, we're disillusioned. We don't know what the truth is about the matter. 
And you know, the chariot in reverse, the chariot is about determination and willpower. When I see it in the re reverse, it reminds me of just like, it's kind of like a depression or like um, really not willing because things are confusing. And so this is, this reminds me of how misinformation really prevents us from taking action. So knowledge is power here. Absolutely. Let's see what else we got. Uh, for some of you, or for some of us, I'm going to include myself in it, in this, in this reading for the collective. Um, this is about doing things differently. This desire for a reform um, is wanting to address the way we've been going after um, our goals. Maybe you felt that you've had to do everything alone or that a lot of responsibility has been on your shoulders as depicted by the Ten of Wands. But the truth is you have needs, right? The truth is you don't wanna be doing everything alone. The truth is we can't do everything alone. We actually have to lean quite a bit on each other. And so this is the, the largest change that we're gonna see shift in terms of like of a, of a paradigm is healing any reactionary sort of um, instincts that say um, this isn't nourishing me so I must do it alone. I think that part of what this is is asking for help, learning how to ask for help, learning to say, hey, I want to learn how to be able to do this differently. The Five of Pentacles indicates that we're not alone in this need. So I feel like there's a call to find commonality in what is needed right now. Hmm. Let's keep going. There's Justice in Reverse. That's Libra. Venus entering Libra means we're going to start accounting for things. We find, we find justice as beautiful. Um, Three of Pentacles, Seven of Cups, Knight of Swords, Judgment in the center, King of Cups, Ten of Cups, the Sun, and the Five of Cups. In the past. Justice and the Knight of Swords in reverse kind of make me think of... Um, urgency. The, the, the Knight of Swords is the fastest moving energy. It sort of moves without thinking. And with the Ten of Cups here, this energy of, of um, contentment, it's known as the card of ultimate contentment. It reminds me of how like when we are content and comfortable, it's easy for us to turn a blind eye to injustice, to things that are happening below the surface that we're not even aware of that move too quickly for us to receive all the details. By the time we hear about it, we just hear the curated message, right? So that's what we're looking at as, as past energy. Currently, look at this. Judgment is in the dead center. Judgment is an awakening, a call to action. The sun is this beautiful energy. It's also very vulnerable. It's calling us into our light, into our sort of position of source. <laughs> For some reason, original sin came out. But yeah, this is we're look. This is Scorpio season. We're dealing with our shadows on a very, very deep level. This has been so far one of the most intense Scorpio seasons that I've. Um, been consciously experiencing, you know, since sort of understanding energy, tarot, astrology. Whenever I see the Three of Pentacles, I think of self-worth. And it's not just our self-worth, but how we value ourselves and each other as a community and the value that each person brings to our collective awakening. So again, I'm seeing a, some sort of theme of like bringing into light 
the power of community. This is, this is the awakening call right now. The sun does want to see things as, as beautiful. This is Leo energy. This is heart space energy. What feels radiant and light? Mm, this is a victory card. This reminds me of a quote, another quote that I had seen recently that I put on online was the universe needed to make you uncomfortable so that you would move. What moves you? What does move you? What moves you out of compliance and complacency and contentment for you to say, this is not good. <laughs> this is not going to cut it. Or you don't do things this way anymore. It reminds me of another time that when I was smoking and a person in my life, I'll just keep it broad, like that, you know, would use a tactic of like, oh, you're smoking. How could you? Oh, so disappointed. I was like, look, that doesn't work anymore. That's shame. That's a shaming tactic. That is emotional manipulation. We can see beyond all of those um, tactics and techniques of fear. I talked a little bit about that last week. We're, be we're becoming aware of our conditioning around fear. And where are you orienting around fear? Where is that leading you? Because the awakening right now is, is towards the lights, towards the sun. Okay? And with that self-worth, self that, that self-confidence sort of comes out. And in the near future, there's going to be a lot of emotions here. Look, we got all cups showing up, five, seven, and the king of cups. When I see the king of cups, this is about mastery over one's emotions. Seven of cups, that's the Neptunian energy. So again, we have the Venus, or sorry, um, yeah, Mer sorry, Mercury is um, interacting with Neptune. This is the energy, the astrological transit that I mentioned earlier, where detail orientation gets kind of shrouded. We're more in our intuitive senses, we're in our emotions, we see things through an artistic lens. It's hard to deal with practical aspects of life. Maybe this is a really emotional time for you. I mean, for all of us, and I, and I don't want to say maybe, I just say maybe because we all have our own ways of dealing with emotions and we all have our own sort of emotionality, sort of um, default, like the, um, the way that each of us processes emotions is different. We have different attachment styles, we have different abilities and expressions of emotion. And primarily what's here is like this need to process grief and to so that we can build off of what is there and understand our deepest emotions around fear conditioning, around our desires, around what we hope to grow into and grow towards. And the King of Cups is about this, this master of emotions. No matter what is going on around you, Look, this king, he's like on a throne in the middle of the ocean. Uh, in other cards, there is a storm all around him. And he's perfectly calm and collected. The king of cups in that way to me is um, really balanced in his emotions and in his mind. There's um, this understanding and knowing of his heart, gender aside, um, an understanding of, of their heart, their heart's desires, their heart's wounds, and that makes them more themselves. That's what gives the king his power. To say, I know I'm able to feel these things and not be rocked. I will not be rocked by this storm. In fact, it's going to allow me to grow in confidence of myself and my community.
his emotions and his values um, are like the guy are like the sail of this lost ship at sea. Okay, any final advice for the people watching? Thank you guys so much for being here, continuing on with me on this journey, this astrological journey. I'm really hardcore and leaning into this revolutionary astrology. It just makes sense to me. It doesn't need to be anything else than what I, I feel it, it wants to be. Okay. A lot of cards are flying. Queen of Wands. Recognize your magic, for sure. That's best friend energy. Commitment. That's an 11-11 card. So faded events may be happening. I think there will be... You, you can trust what joy comes towards you now. It's not an illusion. Uh, sorry. That part is not an illusion. Um, it's there to... Uh, so that you recognize your inherent ability to experience joy. That's really important right now. How are you able to cultivate that for yourself? Cultivate your magic. Root and ground yourself. In a confidence that is quiet and strong. Quiet yet strong. I don't know why I got quiet. This confidence exuded by the Hierophant. There's the throat chakra again. We talked about that last week. I say these videos are, are the great saga, <laughs> astrological saga of our lives, because they are, they do, you know, I've been reading, I've been doing this channel for two years, and I can't help it. I can't help it, even if I want to choose a different theme for every week or every day, or, or somehow, like, give it some unique, they, they, the readings do have, like, a unique, um, you know, something to them. But to me, I see systems. Like I said, my brain is systems oriented. I can see how things are fitting together and how uh, one thing leads to another. That's my Capricorn brain saying, like, if I can see the end and I can see the steps for that goal, 100% we're going to get there. 100%. So this is how I'm using astrology. Okay, my recording stopped before I finished the reading. So let's backtrack just a little bit. We were talking about the Hierophant and the Tower. Earlier in the reading, I said something about using your voice and like trusting your voice. This quiet confidence has a lot to do with trusting your authentic voice. Trust that there's people who are listening, people who trust your opinion, um, people who look up to you as maybe a sort of spiritual authority. They want to know, how are you dealing with what's going on and how are you seeing this? The tower represents everything that is falling away and what's left is the foundation. What is the foundation and what remains um, after a period of destruction? A period of quarreling, a period of fighting. How are you speaking up for unity and bringing people together under a common purpose instead of furthering destruction and divisive action? That's what wants to be shown here as being highlighted. Um, and then finally, we have the death card. Of course, Scorpio energy. Look, death unites everybody. Even the king is here. Traditional power models are no longer, they're, they're not staying. We're not going to be seeing this as much anymore. You know what's valuable? Resilient communities. Communities that can rely on each other. Communities that can ask for things and get what they need by virtue of connection and intimacy. Not because there's wealth not because there's superiority. So death unites us all. Death is this, this bell that's ringing, that's telling us, look into the shadows. Look into this fear conditioning, this fear of the unknown. And this is why I love that this, the card of the month is rest in the unknown. If you want to read more about it, you can visit my blog where I, I did a bit of a write-up on that. The tower in the back, the, there's two towers actually. These are the towers of the moon. 
the moon energy. The moon card is about the unknown and what's rising in the subconscious. We're dealing with our collective fear conditioning and making connections as to how that has shaped our life, how it shapes our daily, like our day to day interactions, how it's affected our relationships, our work, how we treat others. This is death to superiority. This is death to elitism. And what we're waking up to, going back to sort of the present moment in this, in this reading, look, death ushers in the transformation. Judgment, which is the center, centerpiece of this reading, is the awakening into this new life. This call to action to say, we are here, we're showing up for this, <laughs> I want to say, renovation, I guess. For this renovation, transformation. We are here, we're ready to be healed. And look, they're naked. And again, the people on the sun, the, the baby in the sun is naked. This is indicative of vulnerability. In the energies underneath, we saw, again, it, this the, the same energy, just sort of said in a different way, this desire for reform, this desire to change tactics. We're no longer operating under fear or shame tactics. We're saying, you know what, I deserve better than that. I'm not accepting this sarcasm, this, um, you know, another thing I want to say that's coming up right for me right now is... Um, this call to just sort of, you know, quit your crying, quit your belly aching, quit your whining, go take care of it, go take care of yourself. That is a form of elitism to say like, well, those, were, you know, Chicago is a sanctuary city. So to say like, they need to go back to their country and take care of themselves in, in their own country. That's precisely what's on the chopping block here. That kind of attitude is not going to get us anywhere. And it's actually demonstrating your apathy. To say that. Look beyond that. How is that, as, a, as an example, I'm not saying you said that, or some, <laughs> maybe you did, I don't know who you are, but if you hear that kind of rhetoric, just think about how that reveals fear conditioning to say, you know, maybe the fear is even because we, you know, we don't know what to do about that, and that's fine, but there's value in, in showing up as a as a community is there another word for community i've been saying that a lot there's value in every single person's perspective that's here so you need to apply yourself and include your voice in the mix no one is expected to have all the answers that's why i said page of pentacles all we have are questions choose to ask the the, the questions choose to meet people where they're at Choose to make connections, intellectual connections. And this week, especially with so many Mercury transits, Mercury is touching Neptune, Pluto, and Saturn. That's power, limitations, like lessons. Lessons in power. And then Neptune is like this fantasy, this daydreaming, this what can be. We're looking beyond those limitations this week. Um, if you're a creative person or even if you're not, See how you can draw on um, creative notions, inspirations, fantasies to bring you out of limiting beliefs or um, sp especially limiting factors that make you feel like you're stuck and you can't move beyond something because you don't know it all. It's not about knowing everything. It's about questioning everything. I leave you with that. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I got to run, um, but I'll see you all next week.